Houston, are you ready for the event? The event. CBS News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Bill Harwood, CBS News. How do you hear me? I hear you great, Bill. How do you hear me? Loud and clear, Jack. Uh, thank you very, very much for taking a few minutes to chat. I know you guys have been busy up there. I, uh, I do enjoy your tweets. I saw some fun shots of you and Peggy decked out in all of your Fourth of July regalia. Did you guys do anything special besides uh, just the photo shoot? Uh, no, unfortunately, we had to we had to work. We had a few uh, experiments that demanded a, a strict timeline, so we we stuck with those. But we at least got to take a few minutes to to do the photos and and show everybody on the ground how much we love our country. Well, you know, I appreciate that. I uh, really enjoyed the video you sent down too. That was pretty cool. Uh, but you know, you, what your comment just leads right into my next question, which was, you know, before Peggy was added to the crew. You know, you were looking at a fairly long stretch this summer with just you on board to carry out U.S. research. So how much has it meant to have Peggy up there during this period to help out with the science, and how busy have you guys been with research? Research. Oh, we've definitely been busy. Uh, the SpaceX uh, Dragon, uh, SpaceX 11, uh, came up with six tons of cargo and mostly science. So uh, from the moment it docked on about the 4th of fourth or fifth of June until it undocked uh, a week or so ago uh, we were we were it was a sprint we were definitely doing a lot of science uh, to get all of that that body of work complete and then get all those uh, experiments and samples back to the ground for further study so it's definitely been busy and as far as having Peggy on board I, I call her the space ninja because you know she has more experience than any uh, US astronaut on orbit now and uh, she's just a ninja. She just floats all over the place, knocking out tasks. And, and it's great to have her up here. Uh, she's definitely worth more than having just one person. She's like having four. So I kind of feel like we had we had four or five people working on science there for a month. And uh, we were able to get it all done. Well, you know, I was going to ask you, as an old fighter jock like you, how is it having a researcher on board? Has she turned you into a scientist yet? I don't know if you can, but uh, she's she's definitely a scientist. But she's she's got a good a good dab of Chuck Norris in her too. So so we get along great, and uh, we just have we both love working, and and we love what we're doing up here. It really doesn't feel like work. Everything is fun, uh, whether it's uh, you know working on the toilet or or doing cutting edge research. Uh, we we pretty much love it all, and and we're just having a great time. Well, let me back up just a little bit to your launch. Um, I spoke to you before launch about your expectations when it comes to riding in the Soyuz, but how did expectation match up with reality? What were your impressions of riding that spacecraft to orbit? Man, you know, I thought it would be like taking off in the Raptor. You know, it gives you a good kick in the pants, right? But it it wasn't just a kick in the pants. It was like it just it lasted for eight minutes. And just the the power, it was like getting on a big old wild bull and riding it uh, up to orbit. It was just amazing. And then as soon as we kicked off and our little weightlessness indicators started bouncing around, I looked out the window and and just the view was amazing. It was this teeny little blue strip that was going around the earth and all the life that we know lives in that little teeny blue thin line so so that was a amazing perspective check almost immediately um there was a, a point at which right before we were docking that uh Fyodor had to go jerk and uh you know get me back in the game because i was staring out the window at this beautiful space station we were about to dock to um it was amazing and uh it blew my expectations away well, that, that that sounds pretty cool. How about the spacewalks? You got to do two spacewalks, and uh, again, I'll ask the same question: How did expectations match reality? Especially given all the hours you spent in the swimming pool, uh, practicing for this thing, uh, for these types of events. But but reality must be different. 
Oh, yeah. It, you know, I, I grew up on a construction site with a construction family, and so uh, I just building and, and, and getting out and using my hands are, are what really drive me. And I love uh, working at the uh, MBL, the buoyancy laboratory you mentioned. Um, it's a ton of fun. And going outside is a ton of fun. But, wow, what a view. It's just to... You know, we look out the window all the time here, and it's an amazing view. But when you go outside, and there's nothing but this little visor between you and the vacuum of space, you can look up and see more stars and galaxies and just unimaginable depths of the universe that you can't see anywhere else. And to look down and have just this panoramic view of the Earth with no window panes and nothing in the way, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Oh man, you make me want to go. Hey, you're about uh, you're about halfway through. Well, let me back up. You, you're talking about having that space helmet between you and the vacuum. Is there anything scary about it, or are you guys so trained that that that's not even a factor? Well, I mean, I guess you could get paralyzed by the fear. There's a lot of things up here that can kill you, uh, but we have to trust in our systems and in the incredible team we have uh, protecting us and keeping us safe every day. You know. We're up here on the space station. There are so many systems that we cannot possibly control or monitor. And we have to depend on a worldwide team to keep us safe and keep this place running every day. So we have to trust in the team. We have to trust in our systems. And then we can focus on just doing our job. You really can't you can't think about all the different ways you could die or you'd just be paralyzed by the fear and, and never get anything done. And we got stuff to do up here. I hear you, man. I hear you. So I just read Jeff Kluger's book about the Apollo 8 mission, and he recalled in there about Frank Borman and Jim Lovell's 14-day stay in a Jiminy capsule. I mean, compared to those guys, you guys have it pretty good. But I'm wondering, what are the best things about living on the space station? What are the worst things? What are Kind of give me the two extremes of that spectrum. Well, the worst is my wife's not here, so that that's definitely the worst. That'd make it a whole a whole heck of a lot better. As far as what's the best, it's well, I I really like flying around. You you mentioned I'm a fighter jock, and I man, I love doing flips and spins and and flying low and high and fast. It's just a whole lot of fun. But the best part about being on the station is that every day we're doing science and you don't know which thing you're doing. It could be a completely innocuous task, but you discover something that can help humanity. You know, this morning, Peggy is working on growing uh, cancerous lung tissue cultures so that we can study those and maybe we get somewhere with cancer. Um, in the other room, about 20 feet from me, we're looking at a new capillary action uh, CO2 scrubbing system with no moving parts. And so every day, you're just a part of this awesome team that is doing incredible science, and you feel like you're making a difference. And that is the best part about being here. Well, I guess you and Peggy and Fyodor have the station to yourselves right now. I guess later this month, uh, you got Sergey. Uh... Razansky, Paul Onespoli, and Randy Bresnik are coming up. Are you looking forward to getting some extra hands up there, and, and will you regret at all losing some of the space you've got with just a, a three-member crew? You know, it's every everything has its goods and bads. Uh, you know, I, I think we got plenty of space to, to go around, um, and I am excited about having a full uh, complement of people up here that can really utilize this amazing laboratory. Uh, this will be the first time where we have four USOS, so we'll have uh, three Americans and an Italian, Paolo, uh, working on the U.S. segment on science. Four people, that's crazy talk. And I am super excited about how much science we're going to be able to get done with all four people. So overall, it's awesome cannot wait for them to get up here and cannot wait for the discoveries that we make together well let me ask you one last question before i sign off uh, 
you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And I know the Broncos aren't playing quite yet. So what do you guys do for entertainment up there? Well, I, I, I just took a picture on Friday. I'll, I'll send it out on Friday. But we, we started on Friday nights watching movies. There's a actually a projector, and we have this, like, makeshift, makeshift screen that we put on the ceiling. And then Peggy made these, like, bungee lounge chairs. So we kind of sit in the bungee lounge chairs and look up and watch the movie. Uh, but most of the time we were taking pictures or looking out the window or calling family and friends. So we keep, you know, busy on our on our free time as well. Well, hey, listen, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, have a great rest of your increment. Look forward to seeing you back on Earth in early September and and have a great day. Sounds great. Great talking to you, Bill. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WBZ Radio. It was found in one of two bags he allegedly had with him. Test one, two. You got me? Yeah, I hear you. Do you have me? Uh, this is WBZ in Boston. How are you? Great. How are you? Excellent. So uh, let's uh, let's start by talking a little bit about this. You have uh, you've been up there for just a relatively short period of time. What uh, what are your reactions so far? Oh man, I just love it up here. It is it it's so much fun, uh, you know, flying around every day and and just experiencing the weightlessness. Uh, and being part of uh, all the experiments and, and exciting research that we have going on here. So I am just, I am a pig in slop, happy as can be. How long did it take you, or have you really gotten used to being in a state of weightlessness? Um, You know, I think I'm, I'm wired a little differently because, you know, with the test pilot, uh, brain i i guess uh, i'm used to i'm comfortable being uncomfortable and it, it really didn't take very long for me i just kind of got up here and my brain really liked it uh unfortunately we can't always predict how people are going to adapt regardless of their background and i i just got lucky so always better to be lucky than good i i, I haven't had any problems what is your daily life like on the international space station you know, it's pretty busy. We get up around 6 a.m. Peggy gets up earlier than me. Uh, we have uh, two-ish hours of working out a day because we have to um, keep the bone mass and muscle mass at a, at a high level. Uh, impacts and strength training are uh, important to that, so our treadmill and our resistive exercise. Uh, and then Man, we do science like it's our job, because it is our job. Uh, all day, uh, we basically have a, a very choreographed schedule that coordinates all the facilities, uh, support, scientists, investigators, the resources on the station. You know, some need this power or this refrigerator or this microscope. Uh, you know, we we do stuff outside. So it it is this just symphony of of resources that are choreographed on the ground by mission controls in in houston moscow uh huntsville scuba and munich and uh you know it's it's just a a, a whole lot of fun that every day is different uh you're working on different science uh or maintenance activities uh every day and it just keeps you on your toes and it's it's just a whole lot of fun All right, thank you, CBS News and WBZ Radio. Station, we're now resuming operational calm. Thank you for watching. Click below to watch more videos. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon.